Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a guide to Surviving Mars for Complete Beginners. Surviving Mars is a game about, well, Surviving Mars. You're building humankind's first colony on Mars. And it's the sort of game where everything looks intimidating at first, but as you play, it turns out every little thing in the game is easy. This is easy, that's easy, that's easy, and suddenly everyone's dead. But, you know, that's part of the fun. Uh, over the series of about uh, five videos here, we're going to go through setting up an initial base on Mars. We're going to start off fairly slow, fairly gentle, looking at, you know, the basics of kind of control, and then we're going to get kind of deeper and deeper into the game mechanics uh, so that you can be a surviving Mars master and hopefully not have your people starve to death because, you know, that would be good. So right away, uh, you might be tempted to hit the easy start button, and that is perfectly, perfectly fine over here, but we're going to go new game. Easy start just sets up, it's the same as going new game, but it sets up a few things for you um, that are meant to be the easiest. But if we go into new game over here, we can actually uh, pick exactly the same values, but we can actually see what it means to pick these values over here. Also, I'm playing this on a, on a, on a PC here. I'm going to be using mouse and keyboard and talking about that. The game works exactly the same on console, but I actually don't know what the um, the control pad controls are, so I'm not going to be able to tell you, you know, use the right stick and click X or triangle or something like that, unfortunately. But uh, this should also apply if you're playing this on console. So here's the very first screen when you start a game, and this screen requires you to set up who exactly on Earth is sponsoring your mission to go to Mars. Notice over here we've got a difficulty bonus number here. As we make changes, for example, if I click on Mission Sponsor and I just put my mouse over different values, notice how the difficulty bonus changes considerably. The higher the number, the more difficult the game thinks your setup is. So the International Mars Mission right now, difficulty bonus is sitting at 20%. This is a pretty easy start. If we go down to say the Paradox Interactive start, 220%. This is considered to be much, much harder. So you can use this to sort of get a, get an idea as to what you're setting yourself up for. Now, I'm not going to go into the various traits and bonuses of these various sponsors. The big difference between them that determines how easy or hard they are is how much money you start with, as well as how much free research you get from your sponsor. And the reason the International Mars mission is considered the easiest is because you start with, well, it says 30,000 million, I guess, so 30 billion dollars. I just like to call them Mars bucks, so 30,000 Mars bucks is a lot. And it's got a few other things that give you a big margin for error. So if things start to go bad on Mars, you've got ways to recover it a lot with this sponsor here. You also start with a lot of starting rockets. We'll look at what all of this means when we get into the game, but that's basically it. So we're going to choose the International Mars mission. It is recommended for first-time players. If you do hit the easy start button, that's what you get. Then we get to choose our commander profile. This is basically us. What was our job back on Earth, I guess, before we came to Mars? And again, if you mouse over these, you'll see different difficulty bonuses. These aren't quite as significant as the um, as your mission sponsor choice, but it's still pretty important. You can always randomize it if you don't want to pick. The rocket scientist is a really great pick for your first time for several different reasons. You do get the extra rocket with the rocket scientist. Now that's gonna be a bit overkill. We've got four rockets already with the International Mars mission. I don't think we really need a fifth one, to be honest. The big reason the rocket scientist makes your life easier is because it starts you off with a technology called the CO2 jet propulsion. We're gonna see what that means once we get into the game, but trust me, it definitely makes your life a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the rocket scientist as well. Then we get to choose our calling logo. None of this has any effect on the gameplay, except obviously you wanna choose the Brussels sprouts because it is by far the coolest one. Finally, there's the mystery option over here. This isn't gonna be particularly relevant to our tutorial. The mystery is on your playthrough of Surviving Mars, something weird is likely to start to happen. There's something funky going on there on the red planet. Um, and that's mostly sort of a mid to late game kind of thing. So it's kind of outside the scope of this particular tutorial. And you can see there's sort of like an easy to hard rating over here. Some are just, well, easier or harder to deal with. Um, and what's like, what I like about this is you mouse over it, it doesn't actually tell you what the mystery is. It's trying not to spoil things. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on random here. I don't think it's really gonna come up in our tutorial because we're gonna be really focused on the early game. Now, the next screen over here looks very intimidating. I have to admit, there's a lot of stuff going on and if it's your first playthrough, you won't really know what any of this means. Luckily, 
you don't have to make any changes here. Basically, this is our first rocket over here, and you can name it. Uh, mine was called Trust Number One. I'm gonna rename this to the, the Quill Rocket over here. Boom. So my rocket is called the Quill Rocket here. You can see it's got the Brussels sprout logo on the back. Very cool. And it is going to Mars with a certain payload. Your shuttle has, or your rocket has a certain amount of cargo capacity. You can see mine's down to zero over here. I filled the rocket completely by default. It's filled completely with stuff to bring with us. And out of my 30,000 Mars bucks, I'm down to about 26,000 left over because you have to pay for everything on the rocket. That's really what the funding here is for. It's for loading things onto your spaceship here. Now, so we're going to come to Mars with some RC rovers and explorers and transports, some drones, some polymers, machine parts, electronics, orbital probes. We also are going to come with four prefab buildings over here. And if I click here, I can see what the prefab buildings are. These prefab buildings are like IKEA buildings. They were built on Earth fold it up into a box, put onto the spaceship, we ship them to Mars, and it means we can instantly set them up on Mars. It saves time, but also, we are actually aren't going to start with the technology to be able to build these in place on Mars. We're going to have to do some prep work, some infrastructure work, some research, before we can, we can figure out how to build these from scratch on Mars itself. But, I'm not going to touch any of this over here. Note, if you choose a different sponsor, you, or a, um... Uh, yeah, I think just the sponsor, you will get a different default payload, but they're always tuned to be like properly set up so you should at least be able to get started with that. So I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And then we get a really interesting decision. Where are we going to colonize on Mars? You can click anywhere on the planet here and get different locations. And over on the right, you can see a variety of different statistics about the location that we're at. Altitude, temperature, whether it's relatively flat or there was one of these. Most of it's relatively flat. Oh, there we go. Steep over here. So that's probably going to be a lot harder to build over here because it's not very flat. You can see there's a different set of resources available. There are different sets of threats in different areas here. You can also just hit the random button. It'll just pop you to random places on the planet. So you can keep trying different things. Notice the difficulty bonus does change again based on where you settle here. So higher numbers means the game thinks it's going to be harder for you. So you might want to avoid that starting off. You can actually even type in a custom location um, and you can actually share this so if you find like a cool spot you can share your map with someone else by giving them the same co custom coordinates in addition to that oh by the way you can hold the right mouse button here to rotate the planet as well get a nice little look around you can see there are these sort of predefined spots over here that they figure is probably going to be kind of interesting most of them seem relatively easy as well so they've picked out some spots that um, have a good amount of resources and not too many threats. I'm going to go ahead and start in Marineris Alpha over here because it's in this um, it's in this big sort of canyon. And I think that looks really cool. Our average altitude will be quite low. We're below the quote unquote sea level on Mars here, which will impact our ability to have our wind turbines because the higher up you are, the more potent the wind turbines work, but it's got lots of resources, a little lower in concrete, but that's fine, and very low threats. So this seems like a pretty good idea. You can start in the same location if you want uh, to follow along. There are some things that will be randomized once we get into the game. I'm going to hit start here. That will be randomized into the game, but uh, most of what you will experience will be relatively similar to what I get over here. Now, when we first pop in here, we're going to see a big grid of the area of Mars where we're deciding to settle. A large, large area. Mars. Oh, well first they say hi. Hello, nice to see you. We get a little bit of story over here. We get noted, hey, maybe, you know, if we wanna get some people on Mars, and by the way, our first shuttle, I meant to say, has no people on it. It's just robots. These robots are here to set up our initial base. And hint, we might wanna develop water, oxygen, and power so that when we get people over there, they don't, you know, instantly suffocate because that would be a bad thing. We get reminded about our mission sponsor and our commander profile over here. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, you get the play button and fast forward and faster forward over here. I'm just going to hit pause over here so that we can talk. You can use the space bar as well. If you hit space bar, it'll play or pause over here. And I just want to do that because I want a chance to get ourselves set up and acclimated with the screen before we start doing some things. You'll notice at the top of the screen here, we get this sort of hint pop-up. I, I shouldn't mouse over it because it's actually just covering things. But it says, Welcome to Mars. Let's designate a landing site for the rocket. 
and so on. These hints will come up as you play and will give you contextual advice based on what you're doing. I'm going to go and turn them off because they're going to be redundant with what I'm talking about here. So I'm just going to close that hint for now. And you can, you can pop it back open by clicking hints here and you can actually get a list of all the hints that are available in the game. Uh, if you go to the main menu down here at the bottom right, you can also just hit escape to open this up. You can, first of all, you can go to the encyclopedia, which is excellent gives you lots of different categories, including the way to get back to that hint screen if you did miss anything. But I'm going to go to options, I'm going to go to gameplay, and I'm just going to turn off the hint notification here, just because it's going to duplicate what I'm talking about. But you should probably leave it on. Okay, so here is the area that we're settling in. And this, uh, what is it, Marineris Alpha? is really interesting landscape here. You can see it's got these two elevated areas over here, and it's got this lower area down here in between, which is very cool. Now, big grid going on here. Most of the tiles on the grid, if you mouse over it, so here's sector F5, it says unexplored. We actually don't know what's there yet. We've got we've got an idea of the topography. We know that's, you know, relatively flat. Buildable area is 90%. We also think there's a high chance it'll have metals and concrete over here, but we don't know for sure. We only start off with one area of the map explored for us. Now, this is randomized. You might get a different area of the map highlighted than I've got over here. And I believe the reason is that the actual resources on the map are, are randomized every time. So you will get a different distribution of resources than I do. And the game picks one of the tiles that will probably have half decent resources. In particular, I believe it guarantees that your starting area will have some concrete, which is important because we're going to need concrete to build a lot of the structures. Now, at this point, the game wants us to drop our spaceship. Now, we can put it down anywhere. Ideally, you know, we'll probably want to put it in the area that's explored because we know there's some good stuff. But if you, like me, started with some orbital probes in our, dish, in our initial um, cargo in our rocket here, we launched with some orbital probes. And they're sitting up there in space, ready to go and do a scan of an area. I have four of them over here. So I'm going to go and click on this. Then I'm going to click on a tile that I would like to explore. And I could, I could do that anywhere. I could explore this tile over here if I wanted. Or, you know, maybe one with a high chance of concrete, because concrete's very important early on. But what I'm going to say is I'll probably land where this first bit is. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and just click this tile here. So I've got my orbital probe selected. I'm going to click there and reveal it. Okay, not a whole heck of a lot going on. What about this one? So I'm using up another probe. I've got two left. I'm going to click over here. Woo! Lots of stuff. We got water. We got lots of anomalies. We're going to see what that is in a moment. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. I got one more probe. I'm going to go ahead and use it. You can save these for later if you want, but it doesn't really hurt. You can always get more, and there's other ways of scanning the ground. So I'm going to go and use them all up right away. Uh, these are pretty hilly areas that we can't really build in. Maybe over here. 60% buildable, high chance of concrete and metals. Yeah, let's pop that and see what there is. Okay. So I'm now out of probes, I will be able to scan more sectors, and we're going to talk about that after we land. So I've got this big blinking skill uh, rocket over here that's prompting us to land. Now, we're going to go and drop it, but before we do, well, actually, when we do, the screen will change to zoom us in here. So right now, because I clicked on the rocket in my toolbar, it's attached to my mouse. I can right-click to get rid of it and go back to the mouse. Let's talk about the zoomed-in trade over here. This button over here switches you between the map overview and the normal view. So you don't play the game out here, you play it over here. And when you're in this mode, you can move your camera by pushing against the, end, the edge of the screen. You can also use the arrow keys to move around or WASD on your keyboard, which is my preference because it's a, just a good natural place for my left hand to rest, WASD over here. And we can, we can move around. You can zoom in a lot with the mouse wheel. Just scroll up on the mouse wheel. You can zoom in, scroll out to zoom out. And if you zoom out far enough, you'll actually go to the map view. The other thing you can do is if you hit M or you click this button, it's just going to bring you back to where you were, pop out and bring you back over here. If you want to zoom in, say over here, how do you do it? Just scroll up on your mouse wheel, zoom in over here, and it'll zoom you in there. And then you can zoom out to the map view. And then I can decide to zoom in over here, for example. Good way to navigate this. Okay, 
Now we need to drop off our rocket. So let's talk about what happens when we click on this. So it gets attached to the mouse and you can see that we can choose an area to put it. Now, some areas are uneven. That's not well suited to landing. Some areas have these rocks. These are actual um, surface metal deposits and we can't put it there. There's also areas, these yellow areas with that funky blue and white icon here. It's letting us know if we were to land here, we would overlap a deposit. We're allowed to land here, but the game's letting us know Hey, you might not want to do that because there's some stuff here you're going to want to mine. So maybe put your rocket somewhere else. Now, you'll notice on the far edges of the rocket, there's this large hexagonal blue border over here, right? Quite far away. What is that? Well, your rocket has some drones, little robotic drones in it. And this is the range that those drones can reach. So anywhere within this giant blue hexagon, the drones can reach and do some work. And your drones are going to do everything for you at the start of the game. And in fact, for most of the game, they're going to be responsible for collecting quite a few resources, for moving goods around, for building buildings, for maintaining buildings. Drones are incredibly important. And basically, this area inside of this big honeycomb here, this is the area you're going to be able to work starting off. So you want to put it somewhere that is going to be near one of these, say, concrete deposits. These yellow bits over here, if we click on the blue thing, it says this is a concrete deposit. A regolith rich terrain that can be processed into concrete can be exploited by a concrete extractor. What else we got here? We have underground water. This is really amazing to find early on. Uh, and then we've got these yellow things. These are anomalies, and we'll see what these anomalies are later on. And yeah, these black chunks over here, these are surface metal deposits that we can work right away. We don't have to mine them. Our drones can just collect them and use them. So I'm gonna try to, oops, I'm gonna try to place my rocket here in an area, you know what, this seems pretty good. If I put it right here, I'm, I can reach two different concrete deposits, actually three different concrete deposits, two different water deposits, and I'm smack dab in the middle of a bunch of pieces of metal that are just sitting on the surface so that we'll be able to work them. That's pretty good. You can rotate your rocket, or in fact any building, by clicking on the middle mouse button or by hitting R on your keyboard. You can also do, I think, Shift R for the other way around. I thought it was Shift R, but apparently I'm wrong. So R on your keyboard to rotate. I tend to just use the middle mouse button over here. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm just going to click to place the rocket here. Now I'm still paused. If I go to the map view, I can actually see the rocket starting to come down here. If I go play, you can see it slowly coming down. And I'm going to zoom back in over here and it's going to be glorious. There it comes down here you can see the Brussels sprout icon on the side. I'm going to try to zoom in and watch this. What a gorgeous thing. Notice your rocket landing kicks up a lot of dust. Taking off kicks up a lot of dust too. That dust will settle on buildings, clogging things, and will require that the building gets maintained more often. So you want to be careful to not land your rocket too close to the buildings later on because it just means you're going to have to put in more work to maintain things. So a variety of vehicles are coming out of the rocket now. The first three, these are your remote control transport, rover, and explore. And we'll look, see what these do a little bit later. And in addition to that, we get a ton of these little drones. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can actually like pan your camera around and get like, look, perfect for screenshots here, huh? Oh, look at that. Look at these little guys. Oh, they're so cute. So they are deploying out of the spaceship. If you want to reset the view, you can hit home on your keyboard, or you can just toggle the map view on and off and it'll, it'll reset your view like this. Okay, let's go and pause again so that the game doesn't do, you know, not too much time passes without me actually being productive over here. Although, to be frank, everything is kind of cool. Like, like everything's just sitting around. Um, your drones and your robot or your vehicles do have power, but they don't really use power unless they're moving around. And your shuttle here has its own power generator for its own drones. So your drones that are attached to the shuttle will be recharging themselves and it's fine. You're not on any, you don't have any time pressure going on quite yet. Let's look at the user interface for a little bit. Notice there is time passage down here. Time on Mars is calculated in souls. Technically, a soul is a Martian day. Uh, and there's a day-night cycle in here. We're in the daytime, which is why this is yellow over here. The blue bits are nighttime. In, in terms of how it feels in the game, one soul really kind of feels maybe like a year of time in terms of like when you do get people here, uh, them growing up and having babies and so on and so forth. A soul really feels kind of like a year. Uh, also in terms of how long it takes a rocket to get from Mars to Earth and Earth to Mars and so on and so forth. So that that's sort of the abstraction that's going on here. But there's a day-night cycle based on that. We can see we have zero people right now, zero colonists, and that's okay. And we have 10 drones in total. 
and yeah, you've got your speed controls, you've got a variety of buttons on the left and the right. Over in the top left corner, we have a few alerts here, and these are really handy. You want to deal with these alerts as they come up. First of all, we have this old alert that we had scanned a sector. And that's true, we scanned a bunch of sectors and for each one of those we got a little alert letting us know what we found in that sector. You can click on an alert for the camera to zoom to the relevant area and you can right click on it to dismiss it. A lot of the alerts will go away after a while as well. Now we do have two more alerts over here that the game is asking us to deal with. So first is exploration, select a sector to scan. If I click on this, it's going to send me back to the map mode. Now, I don't have any more orbital probes. I can no longer instantly scan a sector. However, we do have sensors on our ship that, or in, in our base, our colony in general, that can slowly scan sectors to reveal them. And we can do that simply by clicking on an unexplored area. You can see here it says add to queue. So if I click here, it'll start scanning this area. And I can actually queue up up to a total of five. So that's my limit here, so it's scanning this one, and then there's four more in the queue, so it'll scan them one at a time. This is slower, it'll take a little while to scan each one. We can speed it up remarkably by building sensor towers, which we'll probably do in a little bit. But now we've gone ahead and selected sectors to scan. I think if I unpause, that was going to say, that notice should go away there, um, because the game is now saying, yep, okay, we're scanning sectors, good stuff. My next notice is, hey, you're not researching anything right now, and you should do that. Okay, so let's click on this button and see what happens. If we click on this, we get the research screen. Now, if I close this window, you can always open your research screen by clicking on the little um, flask icon over here. This is our science icon right down here. So if you click on that, we open the research screen. Now, there is a lot of, or there are a lot of different technologies in Surviving Mars. Most of these are unknown right now. We don't know what these technologies will be. And one of the interesting things about this game is the order of these technologies will be randomized through each playthrough. So what you, what I get might not be what you get, but researching is still awesome. Some of the researches give you access to new types of buildings. Some of them give you access to upgrades to your buildings. Some of them give you access to upgrades to other things. Here, this makes your cargo your, your um, cargo space on your ship bigger. Uh, what is this? Live from Mars. We can get more applicants start to appear here on Earth. There's lots of different stuff. Every time you research one of these technologies, it'll reveal something else in the same technology list. So if I researched magnetic filtering, it would reveal what is over here. Um, afterwards, so you can keep progressing. There's also other things that will happen to reveal more technologies. Now, because we started with the rocket scientist background, we do have access, we've already unlocked the CO2 jet propulsion technology, but we're gonna ignore that for now. You'll notice that each technology has a cost. So for example, if we want to start off by, hey, you know what? Oxygen sounds like something pretty important. We're gonna wanna produce oxygen. Magnetic filtering makes our oxygen production increase by 50%. That sounds pretty good. It's going to cost us 1,000 research to unlock this. If I click on it, it adds it to the research queue. And I can add more things. I can be like, um, you know what? Bigger rockets sounds like a good idea. I'm going to click on that as well. And you can see it's been queued up. We're going to research this one first, and then it'll research the next one. You can always cancel the research by right-clicking on it. You can also right click on it from over no here. Active research. And we do get notified when we have no research going on. I'm gonna go ahead and queue those back up. You'll see right now we're making 300 research per soul. And the reason we're doing that is we're getting 300 from our sponsor. The International Mars Mission gives us 300 research per day. There's other ways to get more research, including the ability to spend money on outsourcing it, but I'm gonna leave that be for now. You'll notice whenever I hit the right side of the screen here, it likes to scroll the list here. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and close that window. We've gotten rid of the last of those alerts. That's great. Let's start building. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Actually, you know what? I think this is probably a great place to put in a cut. We've dealt with a lot of introductory stuff over here. We haven't delved into all the research stuff, but that's okay. Just, just research some things. As, as we go a little deeper, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, start to look at maybe some of the ideas that are handier to research, but you're gonna wanna research like lots of stuff over the course of the game. So, you know, just do things and it's gonna be randomized a little. So again, I can't tell you definitively what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Just explore this. I'm here to tell you like how to play the game, but not how to play the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly the sort of high quality commentary you can expect from this tutorial series. If you're new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe uh, and I will see you guys next time as we start building some actual structures here in Surviving Mars.